Hi guys, and welcome back to Studio One with me, Gregor. So if you've been following my tutorials or the tutorials of my good friend, Joe, then you might know that there's several ways in which you can correct your timing in Studio One. There's Melodyne 5, there's the slip event method that Joe has shown in one of his recent videos, there's audio bend markers, there's time stretching with the option key or alt on Windows. But you're kind of spoiled with choice here and knowing what method to go with in which situation can be a little bit daunting at times. So that's what this video is striving to do, give you a guideline, a rule of thumb, so that you know in the future what method might be appropriate for what situation. So here's my first example. It's a guitar, a guitar loop rather, that is very consistent in its timing, but the original tempo isn't known to us and now we need to stretch it to the song BPM, which is currently 115. When I hit play, you can hear that performance itself is tight. There's no notes that I need to correct, nothing that's too short or too long. But when I play it together with the click, it's obviously not working right. Now, because I know that the performance is tight and consistent because I can hear that, and the only issue is that I have to align it to my current song BPM, then the option time stretch method or alt on Windows is my favorite. Of course, you could also use a different method, but that would be my preferred choice in this situation. So first we would go ahead and move the start of the event to the beginning of the very first downbeat. In my case, that's also the first transient. And then we want to move that to the beginning of the bar. And now we want to go to the end of our event and then hold down Option on the Mac or Alt on Windows. And now we want to stretch that until the second bar, like the first downbeat of the second bar is aligning with the actual second bar here in our song. I can tell that this is the downbeat because one, right? This is the one after the four quarter notes here in the first bar. So I just, at that point, go ahead and stretch that to the beginning of the second bar. And now I know this is gonna work with the click. Okay, here's another example. This performance has a little bit of a drift in the beginning that I want to correct, but the transients are very easy to detect. Transients are these high level spikes here that make it very clear to see where the note onset is. In that case, I really like to work with bend markers in Studio One. It's also great for other percussive material and vocals. Um, so to work with bend markers, first of all, let's listen to this drum loop to see where the issue is. Can already hear in the beginning the snare comes a little bit too early right uh, and we want to correct that then you just go to the audio bend menu here and then click analyze and then you just want to adjust the threshold until the bend markers have detected all of the transients that you want to correct right you can also correct them or add additional ones by going to the bend tool here and then if you want to correct one, just hold down Option on a Mac or Alt on Windows and move it to the correct location. You can also add with a single uh, left click any bend markers that might have been left out. And once you're done, you can just set the quantize amount that you want. Like if you want to have everything dead set on the grid, then just put that to 100%. And then you can hit either Apply or just Q on your keyboard. And as you can see, Studio One has corrected everything and now it should be bang on with a click. And for the third and final method, I want to take a look at Joe's example that he featured in his slip event tutorial where he showed the old Nashville method where you just split a node and then once you split the event container, you can use Option and Command on a Mac or Control and Alt on Windows to just slip the content around. Now, what's great about this method of correcting timing is that it has nothing to do with quantization, the face doesn't get messy, there's no artifacts being introduced, but of course you're a bit more limited here compared to the audio bend method and also compared to the Melodyne method that I want to look at next. So Melodyne is something that I would consider in particular when working with such instruments that have 
a node onset that's a bit hard to detect for bend markers. Like here we can see this base has a lot of decay on it and the attack isn't all that clear at times. So chances are pretty big that quantizing with the bend markers as you can see isn't really quite accurate. In that case, I love to use Melodyne uh, in particular when it's just about correcting a couple of things here and there, but leaving the integrity of the performance as is. To do that, you just hit Command and M on a Mac or Control and M on Windows to apply Melodyne to the selected event. And then you get this beautiful representation of blobs for each and every note, which is in this case, I find more accurate than Studio One's native bend marker system. And then you can just zoom in, just hone in on anything that you want to correct. And just like you would with any MIDI notes in Studio One, just move them around by dragging left and right. Now, I really like to first disable Melodyne's grid to give me a bit more control. You can do that with a click here. And what's so great about this is that it's selection based. So if I have these nodes selected, then moving them would make them longer or shorter as a whole. And the same thing happens when I move just individual parts in between. When you try to do this with bend markers, for instance, and you're not very careful, then you might also move stuff uh, in between the bend markers that you've already corrected. So let's say that you're totally happy until here and you just want to adjust the start point here, then notice how I'm also changing what I've already done before. To prevent that, I would first have to set another anchor point here with the bend markers. But this is something that cannot happen with Melodyne in the first place. So when it comes to this kind of editing, that's part of the reason why I prefer Melodyne in this case. So let's say that I want to correct the note here with Melodyne. Like for example, this one seems a bit long. And then just make them longer or shorter like I would with any MIDI notes. Can also do that together with a click. So you get the idea, of course, you could also just re-enable the grid to do it extremely accurately in Melodyne. But for these kind of materials with long decays, more difficult to detect transients, I think Melodyne would be the superior approach to Studio One's bend markers. So hopefully this tutorial can help you, give you a little overview if you're already familiar with all these methods, when to use which, so that you won't be as confused anymore going forward. Thank you for watching.